Hey guys, I'm tearing up a level one rapid infuser and I was taught a neat little trick, never tried it before. So I figured I'd go ahead and do it for you guys right now. We're gonna tear it down, open it up, and uh, hopefully suspend it in the air. You know, it's always a problem when you take it off at stand that uh, you have no place to put it without damaging it. Let's see how this goes. Okay, the level one is mounted on its own base and comes with a pole. It's got a wheelie base and it is attached to these arms. You see right here, we have keyholes. So these ones here are 1 8 Allen's. I've already loosened them. You don't have to take them out, just loosen them. That's all you need. And this is mounted to the pole, the base unit that we're taking off is mounted to this. Kind of simple. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. Uh, while those ones are loosened up, next we're going to do is lift it up and then we're gonna suspend it. And while we're suspending it, we're gonna take these two number one Phillips off. And then I've been given a very unique solution. Here I've got a braided steel cable it's got two crimped on eyelets right here, right here. We're gonna put that on those Phillips and then it's going to be suspended midair. Wild, huh? So we're gonna try it. In theory, it sounds awesome. We'll see how it works. So first thing we gotta do, remove the pneumatic line from the 300 millimeter mercury port. Just tie it up. Now it's up out of the way. And we're going to remove the number one Phillips around the perimeter. And there's going to be one, maybe two screws that are going to be trapped. We can't get to them until we lean it forward. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, one eighth of an inch Allen's that are holding the unit on. They're already loosened. So all we got to do is lift it off. So let's take all the number ones out and then we will proceed from there. Okay, I've got all the number one Phillips out of the perimeter. I have one more number one Phillips right here. So what I got to do, I'm going to rotate it. Sideways, lift it off, and tilt it down. Once we get the last Phillips out, now the back panel is full up. Yep. There's only a ground strap down at the bottom that's holding it on. Okay, we'll pull the panel off, set it over to the side. Bring my unit back over. And here's where the trick comes in. Somebody showed me this trick using a braided steel cable, the two little Krypton eyelets. I'm gonna hang it from the stand. I'm gonna take two screws and we are going to fit them right here and right here, and it's going to suspend itself. So, ready? Do that right now. Now, the unit can be suspended and you can work on it at your leisure. The trick worked actually pretty well. So take a look at this. Now I have full open access. I don't have to worry about it tipping over. I can see the pneumatic pump, which is right down here. And uh, we'll check that out in a moment. Here's the drain tube where it normally leaks. Everything is good to go. Check around the reservoir. Look at that. What a cool trick. So. Two Phillips screws, steel cable. Seems like it's working. We're gonna go ahead and plug it in and uh, we're gonna test out the air pump right there. It was excessively loud yesterday. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. I was thinking that some of the mounts, which are over here, maybe those were bad, but those look like they're still good. So I don't know. All right, let's turn it on. So right here, you see I put a little bit of a little bit of tension on it and it solves that problem. See that shoulder screw? See that screw right there? 
It's loose. So you see that shoulder screw right there? It's excessively loose, so the pump is allowed to vibrate. It's it's actually bouncing off this mounting bracket. So we need two flathead screws. We're going to pull those out, and then the pump should come out. We're going to uh, maybe put some Loctite on those guys, put it back in, and we should be good to go. So here is the air pump. I took the head unit off. You can see down in there, I have a coil. All right, and the reason I took it apart is because I occluded it. The pump didn't really change its pitch. And since it didn't change its pitch, that means that it's not really under load. And that would be why, you know, it's it's working a little too hard. And come to find out, I, I was thinking when I seen this large block that it was going to be a, a diaphragm piston pump. But it is a solenoid piston pump. And um, here we go. So here's the solenoid. It's got a return spring right there. You have a uh, inlet right here. So this is your air inlet. Make sure there's no dirt underneath it. Can't pull it off because it's got a snap ring. There we are. Uh, this is the sleeve. One of the things I noticed and I already corrected is my reed valve right down there. It was sitting a little bit proud. So there was air that was able to get underneath it. So what you do is take that little spring steel reed off and you bend it down here at the base by the screw don't bend it down here by the port bend it just a slight slight bit so that it wants to constantly press against the block see that so it's completely sitting flush reassembled torqued it down and you got to make sure because it's only indexed by a single hole that both of them are covering the hole correctly because if it's even partially not covering the hole it's not going to build pressure so i checked the ring for scoring there's no scoring these guys right here, uh, the bearing surfaces are nice and smooth, beautiful. So this guy's ready to go back together and uh, we'll test it out now that it can build pressure because this guy here is now sitting much more flat. Okay, so here we are, we got it back assembled. And one of the things that you should notice is when you occlude it and then take your finger away, the pump changes its pitch because it's under load now and also, you hear that gust of air. So that smoothness of operation is partially why it was vibrating too much. It's because, like right now, it's vibrating really bad in my hand. You see it. When I include it, the vibration goes down. So, a little revalve was part of the problem. 